and such a whole bunch of activity in the U.S. Um, we're going to start with VLF fault shifts, and then we're going to get into uh, the big shift in California on a bunch of faults, and uh, that's a big deal in uh, California as well. So before we begin, all of our programs are dedicated to our Heavenly Father's service. We will certainly begin with a prayer ask for protection for this program. And Heavenly Father, we do ask for protection for this program that we may continue. This is your program. We want to be able to continue to give warnings and give updates of the activity changes and earth changes that are going on and share a little bit of your word um, with all those that are drawn here. And so we thank you for protecting this program, for protecting us as well. You give us shelter under your wings and Jesus, we thank you for shepherding us, for lifting us and carrying us when we need that as well. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for the understanding, the discernment you bring, and the peace that passes understanding through these times of political change, medical change, um, acts of tyrants, tyranny, and the many blessings that come with salvation to come for many. We thank you for all of these things through Jesus' name. Amen. And so we're beginning in Corbin, Virginia. Corbin, Virginia, um, and this is UTC time, I believe. Yeah. Um, so 1900, so this is maybe eight hours ago now, um, had a, a fault shift, a VLF fault shift. And look at the time of onset is uh, 1940, oh, what would we call this, 1946-ish. And uh, there is one that starts before this, and that is this big shift here. The timelines have been shifted. The actual onset of this is right here. And we take away this timeline gap to line up these earthquakes where they belong compared to other seismograms. And this started at 1940. All right, so this was the first big shift. And where was this first big shift? That big shift was in Massachusetts and uh, in Oak Ridge. Okay, so that's coming from the Adam DeWancy uh, Observatory in Oak Ridge, Massachusetts. So that's a big shift in Oak Ridge starting this fault shift off through several states. We're going through half a dozen states here with this. So from that site we then go we then had a little bit later onset um, 47 at Corbin um, in Fredericksburg Observatory, Virginia. So Corbin, Virginia. Then uh, a little later um, 19 or 17, but sorry, I'll click on that and make it a little larger than I can read it. Um, 1949 in Dugway in O'Toole County, Utah. Another big VLF shift there. And then Wisconsin got involved at 1950, about 1953. So there's the onset there, a short burst of VLF waves. And then we've got a later onset still, 1950, about 57, 56, 57, about 57, I guess. 1957 at the Peaks Kenny Park in Maine, USA. And then another site shifting, uh, 1959 in Red Lodge, Montana a short burst of VLF waves. So pressure being applied to the U.S., multiple locations reacting with much the same level acti of activity in, in uh, four of the six cases. It, it was very similar, at least. So again, this was the, uh, the biggest shift that we had out of that series. And that's a lot of movement. And I don't know if that isn't continuing. I haven't had time to go back because I found all of this California movement. But uh, later on in the day, we had movement to Dagmar, Montana. And this was a big shift there as well. We already had VLF waves, low amplitude, as we do almost every day, um, through Dagmar, Montana, probably faulting or uh, shifting along the fault in the Missouri River 
which is I think 18 miles from this site and then this is up another uh, tributary of that river so it's probably a, um, a splay fault off the Missouri that gets this large VLF activity occasionally right up to Dagmar. It's a valley going up through there with the river in it and Hopedale, Illinois had uh, very unusual matching sets of VLF waves. These look manufactured in that they duplicate each other so many times. Um, and because the amplitude remains much the same for each of them, it looks like a man-made signal coming out of Hopedale, and I'm not sure what that would be that's uh, creating that. Earlier today, from Kingsville, Texas, we had a big move, uh, another VLF move, almost an earthquake, um, in the felt range with this early onset of tighter waves. Uh, but this, this uh, heliplot system, because it's only one line per hour, it makes everything look closer together. And so although these look close together, they're actually quite well spread apart, so I don't think this would have been felt. It just appears that it's tight. And now... We're going to California, and we're starting just inland of the uh, Mendocino Ridge, um, just east of Honeydew, and we're looking at the Lynn 20 channel, because the Lynn 20 channel is a higher amplification channel, okay? So, and that's the reason I want to show you this. And I'm not going to click on most of these because uh, it doesn't help that many people, but that's what it looks like. Um, well, I'll give them a one click, and this is the same site on Lynn 10. Okay, so you can see the amplitude drops off significantly. So there's major activity coming inland of the Mendocino, but it's not always as high as what we see it at Myers Flat on the Lynn 20 or at uh, Honeydew on the Lynn 20. The Lynn 20 site amplifies the signal larger. This is what it looks like on Lynn 10. So I went all over California looking to see what matched up to the Lynn 10 site. Um, for these two, because here's uh, Lin 10 at Honeydew, then we've got Lin 10 um, for Myers Flat. I went over to Susanville. Susanville is a good match. The activity at Susanville is as high as inland of the Mendocino. That's what that size gram says. And then, then I went down to uh, Woodland northwest of Sacramento, also on Lynn 10, and we have another match. The activity is in the same time period, and it's elevated at the same, uh, about the same amount. I went down then all the way down to Parkfield, still hunting down the Lynn 10 type seismograms. And here in Parkfield, Right in the same time period, we had an increase. So we had a pressure increase all over Northern California that showed at the same time. That I was not expecting to see. Now, that is just to do with the general force application to Northern California. Multiple sites reacting to force. I'm gonna, before I do the... Uh, San Andreas and Hayward, I'm going to go down here and show you there was big activity at Bunker Hill Butte, 12 miles west of Lake Tahoe. I believe that's their water reservoir there. And Black Butte, also, this is on Lynn 20, it's a more active seismogram, but we don't have any choices up there. Um, so this is an amplified signal because it's a Lynn 20, but it's still very active. And this is Black Butte up by Mount Shasta. And Black Butte has been like that um, every time I've checked for the past uh, near three weeks now. All right, so now we're going to have a look at what's going on on the San Andreas. And I did a lot of hunting to pick through the sites to find these. Uh, so there's, um, there's not so many sites, but uh, it's very important. This begins south of San Francisco between Bruno and Linda Mar on the San Andreas Fault. So we're south of the Golden Gate Bridge. You don't see it much better that way. So let's leave it this way. And uh, that's a major fault shift. These are also one hour per line. So this fault shift um, begins here on the 1700 line, goes uh, one, two, three, about four minutes in here. 
Oh, sorry, no, those are uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5 minutes per, per gap there. So 5, 10, 15, uh, about 20 minutes. 20 minutes in, in after, so 17, 20, the onset. And here we go with a big shift, VLF waves and high frequency waves. You can see this area of uh, very significant distortion. And this lasted for uh, one, two, uh, near three hours. Two and a half hours, two hours and 40 minutes. So a shift, big shift, lasting for two hours and 40 minutes on San Andreas and this is uh, the farthest south I could track it on the San Andreas Fault system. But it did go further south. We'll show you that uh, a little bit later. Um, 22 miles to the north and north now of the Golden Gate Bridge in the uh, preserve. It's a forest preserve east of Larkspur. And here we're on the San Andreas again and seeing fault shift at the same time. Here's the 1700 line. Here we're... Um, we're 1720 in, so that began at the same time. We had a shift, coincidental shift, start, well, not coincidental, it's the same fault, shifting 22 miles north. So we've got 22 miles of the San Andreas shifting so far. Uh, I checked further north and I found this site, and we're following this black line, 1700, gets over to 1720, and so we're now 30 miles north from the origin site, that we began at, a, a, uh, you know, further south, uh, south, it, it began in south um, San Francisco, all right, and further north, we're on a different size of gram type, so the appearance changes, but look at the activity, well, that doesn't help, look at the activity that we have here, um, we're uh, at Valley Ford, and we're now 55 miles up the San Andreas and it's still shifting pretty good. And now we're uh, on the San Andreas east of Philo and we're now 115 miles up the San Andreas and it's still shifting. Up at Pratt Place we got away from shifting and we got into stress tremors. So this is not the San Andreas shifting so much as it's tremoring because of the stress of all the shifting that went on south of it. And we saw this, we can see this tremoring um, still, well, I'll get out of there, um, still in Bryceland. Bryceland is only 12 miles south of Honeydew. Um, the site east of Honeydew that's been showing all of the tremoring activity on Lynn 10, and this is the site right here. So the San Andreas is going to hook, as far as I'm concerned, now the, um, the professionals say that all the San Andreas doesn't hook to the Mendocino. Well, it runs for a couple of hundred miles up from the Salton Sea, and it's actually still running south of the Salton Sea down into uh, the Gulf of California. They just call it a different name, but it's the same fault. Um, spray off that same fault. It's all interconnected all the way from the south end of uh, the Gulf of California, the Baja, south end of the Baja, all the way up to the Mendocino Ridge. And does it really stop 12 miles south of the Mendocino Ridge where we see all the activity coming, uh, coming inland? I don't think so. It doesn't make any sense that it would. And now this is the activity that we see inland of the Mendocino again, just to refresh our memory, but uh, looking on the Lynn 20 site, um, it's like this. That's what we're really looking at. Amplified view, but it's still significant. And so then I went across uh, wondering what, what happened to the activity? Where did it go? I happened to stop at, uh, in the Bay of San Francisco at Twitchell Island and saw this signal, but that's not it. That's not enough of a signal. That's some of the force and stress being applied, but uh, I don't accept that as being it. 
And so I went across to the Hayward, and uh, we're just west of Danville, and here's the activity, and this is matching up with what we saw on the San Andreas for time and volume. Let's look at the onset time of 17 and 20 minutes. Same onset time as the San Andreas. And now we're on the Hayward. Well, what's in between? What's, what has happened? Well, what has happened is it's jumped through San Leandro, or close to San Leandro, and it dropped off these signals. Okay, so it's jumped across the southern bay of San Francisco through San Leandro, or very close to San Leandro. This is a very turned down site. This site doesn't show much activity, hardly ever. And here it's got some big signals going across there. That's because it's shifting. It's shifting through there. And this carries on. Now we're looking on the Hayward, east of Hayward itself, the town of Hayward, on the Hayward Fault. Same time period, 1720, for the onset of this shift. And now we're continuing our way south. We're now over 200 miles. This is down to uh, Milpitas. And Mil Milpitas only has the Lynn 20 site, so it amplifies the signal I don't think it's any larger than what we have here east of Hayward on the two sites north and uh, north and looking south down going down to uh, east of Edenvale still following the Hayward we find this so there's no reason that we have excessively large activity in the middle of uh, three sites that are not terribly active I mean this is significant what we have uh, east of Edenvale still following the Hayward but it's nothing like what is described on the um, LYZ20 site. So that is the, and that's the end of the activity. Um, we ended up uh, some 60, something like 60 miles added to um, the 190 miles on the uh, San Andreas. We had a shift along uh, the Hayward and San Andreas combined of uh, about 250 miles. That's a big move, all at the same time. Now, it wasn't um, done in a dramatic manner. It didn't shift hard and fast. It shifted more softly over a longer period of time, and that allows the movement to occur without the uh, damaging forces being expressed. So this is a warning of, of things to come. Um, we just saw the, um, with the seismograms that I just displayed, we just saw six states shifting at much the same time, but disconnected. Just the force application was much the same. And we could see the times varied between the different states. But we were all over the place um, looking at stress or force being applied to the U.S., now that's quite a bit different than what we're seeing in California where we just saw the Hayward and the San Andreas, the northern portion of the San Andreas, move at the same time an entirety of, uh, or in total, 250 miles. And uh, to see the two of them move together is a dynamic that was not understood that I'm aware of in California earthquake history. Um, if, if it's there, I've never come across it. So this is a, a bit of a discovery at the same time. But it tells us of things to come. We've got a lot of activity, um, and where we have had a lot of activity, there has followed large earthquakes, and we're seeing that around the world. And so this is looking like uh, we're building towards a major earthquake, in Northern California. Um, when this is going to occur, I don't know. I can only show, to explain what the seismograms are telling me, that stress is building, activity is building. Um, activity builds because stress builds. Um, we're getting a reaction to increased stress in Northern California. And so at some point, uh, hopefully the next uh, large earthquake we get is not beyond about a 7.5, and that creates a warning of the next step up to come, which is probably going to be in the nines. Low nines, but 
Um, and then after that, we still have um, the Greater Cascadia earthquake, um, which may end up being, uh, you know, something that shifts plates all over the world because we just saw, we just went through an event where plates shifted all over the world, um, tied in with the eruption of Hunga Tonga, with Hunga Tonga being a symptom and the tsunami being a symptom of plates shifting all over the world. Well, if we get a major earthquake like the Cascadia happening, it's going to shift plates all over the world because it's going to be much larger than normal based on the cluster earthquake process that was um, presented uh, by Chris Goldfinger, the leading researcher in that field. Now, that was not expressed as a result of his research, but it was shown within his research. So, this is a big deal what's going on. So, we will... Um, I hope you're enjoying our programs. Um, this was this was a big, uh, a tough one to put together. There was a lot of information to go through. So I'm sorry we're coming on so late, um, but we uh, we bring forward the information when we um, when we discover it and when we can put a package together for you. And if you're liking what we're doing here, which is a little bit different than most other sites. Um, we try and look a little deeper, um, like or subscribe. Um, recommend us to your friends. Um, there's a big bunch of people in California that need to know what's going on. And we're seeing shifts of the Hayward and the San Andreas and coincidental shifts um, up by Mount Shasta and from Sacramento across to Clear Lake. I mean, this is a lot of shifting going on. And uh, people in Northern California need to be aware of this. We showed activity in Southern California earlier today. Also a big deal. When you've got magma channels right downtown LA, um, where San Bernardino is that full of activity as well, people need to know this and, uh, and wake up to the hazards that are developing, the risks that are developing in California. And uh, without knowledge, um, there's there can be no substantive action to mitigate risks. Okay, so we uh, we pray for understanding, and that people's eyes will be opened to the truth of what's actually going on. It's a it's a challenging truth, but we have uh, every reason to have faith, to have peace. Um, and to move forward in strength because all of heaven is with God's children. So draw close to God, keep your eyes on Jesus, and keep moving forward with joy. And we'll see you next time on Feed My Sheep, Earthquake Reports, and more. Bye for now.